Um, very happy to be here again. I'm Chris DeClerc with Delta Plastics. I'm an irrigation specialist. Been with the company for about 10 years, and my primary role is to help push best management practices to help you guys save time, money, and labor, and hopefully water across the board whenever you're using uh, using polytubing. Um, one of the main issues that we see a lot of times is this. If I can get this to go up here. got a well right here at the beginning of a triangular field right and you've got a very short row coming right out of the beginning and then you've got long rows at the very very end you might question as to what hole should I punch all the way down that line in order to make sure that water distribution comes out evenly all the way down that field and it's very very hard right because the last thing you want to do is rupture the pipe we're very very worried about doing that so a lot of times the pipe looks like this at the very, very end of the field, and it might be tied on the front end. So if it's tied on the front end, what do you have a lot of? That's water flow coming off the end of the field, right? So we overwater these furrows, and we can't pump water down to the very, very end. So that's uneven distribution, and that happens a lot on triangular fields. Pipe pointers are programmed that if you measure the flow right there at the beginning of the well, you can not only get into the right size pipe, it can tell you how long that field's going to water out, it can help you split that field into smaller sets, and it also can tell you what features you can use with pipe planter. So when I'm talking about different features, we run pipe in different ways. We might run pipe down the top of the field, we may run pipe down this way, we may have a well right here where we've got a ridge down through the middle of the field, and we run pipe down through the middle, and then punch holes on either side of that pipe, right? We might even have a case where we come out of the well and we go this way and this way and we split that flow going left and right. The thing is, you don't know what size pipe to use, nor do you know what size holes to punch in the pipe if you're not using a program like this and at least first checking the flow of that well. These results out of Mississippi State say that even on square fields right here, if you're punching the right holes, you can save this amount of time, fuel, and labor. This is the hit on You can put 10 bucks an acre back into your pocket just on square fields. So that might be changing from a 916 just to a 5 8 or going from one foot of head pressure to two to two and a half foot of head pressure. And Pipe Planner can help dictate that for you. So when we get into a situation like this where a guy didn't measure his flow, and he has four sets right here on this field. I went out and I just simply measured the flow rate. So we went from four sets in four days watering this field to two sets in 29 hours apiece. That's a lot of less watering time just by knowing the flow rate, just by getting into the right size pipe, and just by punching the right holes in that tube. Okay? Now inside Pipe Planner, there's these cool tools. And at this particular field, we've got a field that's watering out in 39 hours. Now extension says, don't water out furrow irrigated crops longer than 36 hours. We shoot for an 18 to 24 hour time frame. And if you know that in the back of your head and then you get into pipe planter, you can draw the field. It takes into account your flow rate. It takes into account an acre inch application, whether you're punching holes every furrow or every other furrow. And then it can tell you the, this information, how long the field's gonna water out, how much water's coming out of each individual hole in order to keep the pipe totally pressurized so you can water out. So is this good or bad? I just said longer than 36 hours is bad, right? So all you have to do is look at that and then say, hey, pipe planner, I want you to break that up into sets for me. And it will automatically do that evenly. All you have to do is click a few buttons and that button right here is just update. It then goes from a higher flow per furrow to in time with which you're going to water that field, which is 18 to 24 hours. It's as simple as that. On this bottom side of the field, we got a complicated situation, right, where we want to know exactly what these holes are and what these holes are, along with the field that takes longer than 36 hours to water altogether. Again, Pipe Planner really, really shines in these particular field situations. So we're keeping the pipe tight all the way down, breaking the field into two even sets again, where now our pipe runs here. And then we have a dummy line back behind it, two sets, and now we're watering in 18 to 24 hours. So the beautiful thing about it, you just get out there and you tweak that butterfly valve. Set one, 24 hours, set two, 24 hours, and you're good, good to go. This helps you determine exactly where to break those fields into sets 
it's a program, it takes into account all that information, you don't have to memorize any values or anything like that, and it's completely free. So, head pressure and friction loss are two big components to what Pipe Planner calculates. And if you've got high head here at the very beginning, and then you're going downhill, and you have a lot more head pressure at the end, even on a square field, and you punch in the same size hole, you're gonna have a very, very irregular distribution pattern, only because that pipe went downhill, right? All the pressure's at the end. Yes, sir. Can you back up one slide? Sure. Am I supposed to ask questions? Sure, you know? absolutely. <laughs> on that, can you adjust that, or if you had a surge valve up there, can you adjust that, or they're the same because your surge valve would be the same out? You just draw, well, what we're, we'll talk about okay. surge valves here in a minute and how to input that information and how to input that into, because this value right here is very, very specific on what you enter into a surge valve with regard to the two different soil types. We'll talk about that at the very end. Yes, sir. How you draw things in Pipe Planner has to be very, very specific to the program. And how you might do things out in the field may be different, but there's a way with which we do things programmatically that Pipe Planner has to accept and there's a way that we may do things a little bit differently in the field. And once you get used to drawing the pipe and drawing your sets and drawing your fields, how pipe planner has to have it, then you can kind of change things up and improvise, if you will, a little bit differently from it and still gain the benefits from the program. So again, if you're going downhill, it's a lot, it, it can be problematic, right? That water moves faster down the hill, higher velocity means more friction loss. Therefore, you can have you know, increased pressure down here at the end of the pipe. So here's a couple other factors, what influence friction loss to the pipe. It could be the length of the pipe. It could be the diameter of the pipe. It could be how fast water actually flows down through the pipe, okay? And in situations where we're going downhill, anybody got this? Where you're putting ropes or putting barrels underneath the pipe? Right, so in the past we're doing this kind of haphazardly, right? We put it every four to six tenths, was what I was told by Phil, Phil Packer you know, 10 years ago, which is, hey, get some barrels out there and start punching some holes in between the barrels and see what we can do. What we can do then is probably better than what the grower is doing, but this is what we're doing. And that's a lot of time, right? I mean, this, there's no pressure on that pipe whatsoever right here. And the whole, the whole method of filling up the hole before the water runs down, you know, keep the goldfish alive, if you will, before we can irrigate down. This is digging a big gaping hole in the front of the furrow before we can even get down the furrow. And it's only because there's no pressure on the tubing because we don't know where that maximum head pressure occurs down the pipe. So again, uh, no way. I'm not kind of toggling me through that. I might, be, I might be low on batteries. Just kind of arrow through it. To the right, Katie. Okay. There it goes. Yeah, just right, right here. To the right, yeah. Okay. yeah. So look, I'm, I'm trying to get rid of all this, guys. You know, and I've met some guys that have trucks devoted to hauling around barrels just for one or maybe two fields. That's babysitting very, very complicated fields and taking away from a lot of time on other fields. So this is uh, Johnny Ryder, or Jeff Ryder over at Desart, and we had a row rise field. He was putting a bunch of barrels up underneath the line. I said, hey man, we got this cool feature in Pipe Planner. If you use the, if you leave the end of the pipe open, it'll tell you where to put a buildup or where to put a barrel. So the maximum head height that I don't like you to go over in pipe planter is about two and a half to three foot ahead. So what pipe planter says in those situations, if you're going downhill and you reach two and a half foot ahead, you're blowing up and you need something underneath it. And if you got eight foot of fall, it goes down and down and down and says, hey, you need a build up there, and down and down and down again, three foot ahead, you need another build up there. Instead of going build up, 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 all the way down, or barrels all the way down the line, I can tell you to put three big mounds of dirt where you've been putting 30 barrels up underneath the line and save you a whole bunch of time. It's a beautiful concept. Mike's used it a bunch, Katie's used it a bunch, other irrigation specialists have used it a bunch. It's the same situation as going down the field in a multiple inlet type of situation. We tell you to run the pipe over the top of the levees. For what reason? Because the field's got fall to it, right? And the levees hold pressure back uphill so we can tell you how many gates to put in per patty. Now, if you want to use a barrel, go ahead. You simply alter that maximum head pressure to be the height of the barrel. Just like we asked you in a multiple inlet situation, how high are your levees? Make sense? It's just like a choke going down the line. And when you think about it, if you're putting a rope around the line, you're sausaging off the pipe, correct? What if you could just use a smaller diameter pipe all the way down? So for example, 
you're pumping 2,000 gallons a minute, you're going downhill six foot, maybe you could use 10 inch pipe in that situation and use friction loss to your advantage. Because you're essentially necking off the entire pipe to a smaller diameter. Will pipe planner tell us if that'll work? You can go into the, to the, uh, the set summary page and change up the pipe diameter and see if it will. And if it does, it'll give you a design. If it doesn't, you'll have some error and it'll flag you and say no. In that case, I would just leave the end of the pipe open and let it tell you where to put it. All right, this is another farm um, close to uh, Elber and Prairie County, but this is the second set. And this gentleman, uh, David Stroll, and he's got about eight foot of fall going all the way down this line. So again, lots and lots of buildups to go down. When we came up, and this is what I told him, I was like, hey David, let's put you know, these three foot tall buildups all the way down the line. What do you want to use? And he's like, well, let's use some of these old chemical barrels that I got. So that's what we did. And then we put like a little pallet on this side and this side so the pipe kind of ran smooth and ran over the top of it to make it work. But this is, you know, that's the third set of buildups. And I got good pressure down the line and still good pressure back uphill. Not only did we tell you where to put the buildup, we also told you what holds the punch right here in order to water out those longer and shorter furrows. furrows. So now he's got a design for a field that he's been babysitting a lot in the past and it works really, really well. Okay, I encountered this a couple years ago where this is south of Stuttgart, Arkansas where a gentleman had a relay. So these are all kind of methods that pipe planter can assist in saving you time and labor and figuring out uh, uh, your watering uh, deals with pipe, with polytubing. So he's got a relift here, he's pumping into a situation where he's got a 200 acre block and then 177 acre block. But what's happening here, he's got all this underground pipe, and you guys probably got a situation like this where we got multiple risers pumping from one big water source. We're trying to figure out what the heck flow is all of these and how open or closed can I have all these at the same time in order to save labor. And it's, it's hard to do that because you got to bounce around with the flow meter at each one of these, maybe multiple ones, and determine what's the flow here, what's the flow here, and what's the flow here. Well, this is how he's watering it. It's watering kind of these at the same time. It's kind of a haphazard approach, but it's taken this long. 14 days total just to water, you know, roughly four, 400 acres. So we call us up, hey Chris, I want to try to figure this out. I know it's going to take a little bit of time. Oh, by the way, I got another relift down here too that I don't use because I'm scared to death of blowing up the underground pipe. Well, let's use your water, man. Let's use it all. So we pumped it into it and I bounced around with two different flow meters and it took the better part of a couple days to figure it out. But now we water these two fields because these two fields are big enough that I can get water on and off the field in 18 to 24 hours, okay? The water drops how long we can drive the field and the acreage tells us how long we're gonna get the water on and off the field. So those two fields worked well, those two together worked well, those two sets, on and on, we figured that out all the way down until we, you know, this set was too big so we had to water it alone. But five days versus 14 days. And it freed up a whole lot of time. A couple days of work on bouncing around and doing that. Now, are you guys going to do that with a flow meter at each individual point? That's a, it's a heck of a lot of work, right? To have to go around and to have somebody else and calling them and everything. That's time in itself. What if you had a situation like this where you had some reservoir over here or a river and you're pumping into each one of these individual discharge points, okay? And what you want to find out is, hey, what's my flow rate at each discharge? So I can use that in pipe plant. And now I want to run multiple fields together, Chris, if I possibly can, so I can reduce the amount of labor. And on top of that, my flow rate's very, very inconsistent coming into it, or it drops down and the head goes up and down all throughout the year. Well, this is my acreage per each zone where polypipe is coming out. You see the little white lines where I've got polypipe uh, drawn in? You can take this calculation in this situation, which is the area times how many acre inches you're going to apply. It could be two, three, or four. This is how many gallons are in one acre inch. Divide that by the time with which you want to water. If it's 18 to 24, you plug it in. If you're a cotton guy and you want to go 12 hours, you plug that in. Times 60 minutes an hour, and you can get a flow rate without measuring the flow per each zone based off just off acreage. Now, if you know the flow rate for each one of those, then you can get in the pipe planter and run a design, right? And then from a design, you can get head pressure on the tubing. And then you can go out and check the head and make sure that that head stays constant all the time. So this is my old mentor, Phil, but I still do it today. I stick a piece of tube, tubing into the pipe and raise it up and measure the head height with the ruler from the ground all the way up. 
that head should not exceed this design head, and now you know your holes without ever measuring a flow rate. Now that's on the situation where you've got complicated a riser network, and it might deter you from even gathering a flow. So I'm not telling you to go out and just, hey, don't nobody measure flows. I'm telling you guys, this is a method where you can get flow and at least get a design where we can get fill the water on and off the field a little bit faster than just letting it be. There's still work that we can do in that situation. If you can maintain head and keep that flow out at the same time, you're doing a great job. If that head were to, to, to go down, meaning that if your reservoir goes down, what do you got to do? Well, you got to twist, cut down, or open up that bonnet a little bit more in order to make sure that that head stays at that particular level. Does that make sense? You're basically using head to drive your, your design and not necessarily flow. Because we want it to look like this. We don't want the pipe to look like this, if at all possible. That's half a foot or a foot ahead. This is a good two, two and a half foot ahead pressure. All right? All right, so surge. Saves a lot, right? This is a surge valve here, kind of on the edge of the field. This is what surge looks, let's see if that will work, okay? Kind of press that, press that. Ah, I don't think it's going to work. I don't know why it's not either. But anyway, I don't know if you guys have seen that or not. But what it does is it sends water, it soaks water down every, you know, four hours or every six hours. It may go one side, it may go the right side, the left side, the right side, the left side, all the way down the hill, down the field, filling up the profile and then casting water across an already saturated moving front. In situations where you may have dry, big cracking clays or silty loam soils where the soil seals up very, very fast and gets off the field too fast. So how do you program something like this? Well, after going to Henry's um, uh, surge valve school, I found out in order to work a surge valve like this, you either have two different types of soils. You have a cracking clay or a silt loam. And with a cracking clay, you take the same value that pipe planter set as your runtime and stick it right there in the advanced cycle and let her be. In a silt loan, you're going to get out faster, so cut that time in half and then enter that time in the surge valve and let her be. If you've got a situation where you have an offset riser and you've got a smaller percentage of field going this way or a smaller percentage of the line going this way and a larger percentage going that way, there's a video of me, if you can stand and look at me anymore on YouTube, showing you how to do that. And there's another video right over here. This is the cracking clays. Here's the offset riser, and here's the one for silt loam right there. So this YouTube page for Pipe Planner really holds a lot of good Q&A. And there's, there's Mike right there setting up a surge valve. So, you know, in consortium with other profit and nonprofit groups, we take all those uh, that information. We make videos for your disposal so you can learn how to use Pipe Planner and other best management tools that, that are out there.